we're going to cover is my key, key message to you. So all of you that I want you to learn this habit, okay? I want you to tell me, okay, what's the first rule of any story? Theme. Theme, right? We better have a theme. No matter how good our story, the one thing, whether it's very obvious or not, that appeals to anybody, including yourselves or an audience, they may feel it, they can't define it, but it's there. And that's the theme. Now, what emanates from the theme? Moral. Your story, your characters, your plot, right? Every story has how many sequences? Third. Three. Three. Three, right. First act, second act, third act. What's the first act? Exposition. Okay. What do we find out in exposition? The setup. What's the pain? Who the characters are? Yeah. And what the plot is, correct? Do we ever start a story until we know what for sure? The ending. The ending. We have to know the ending. We don't get in a car and just drive. We have a point. Now to get to the ending, if we had to drive from here to Denver, we can go up to Sacramento, we can go up to San Francisco, we can go various different ways. That's how you unravel a story, okay? In the first act, we have to find out who the people are, what the situation basically is, okay? And maybe, maybe, just maybe, some drop hints about things that are gonna happen. If we look at Rocky, we see Rocky as he's getting thrown out of his gym and he has a girl that he likes but he's got nowhere with. He wants to be a fighter. He doesn't want to be a bum. Okay? Then, what determines the end of the first act? Hello? There has to be an event. An event has to happen Okay, at the end of the first act. Okay? Something that propels us out of the first act. Conflict? Well, there's conflict. The inciting incident? There has to be an incident. Something has to happen that takes the story into second gear. Plot point? If you will. Okay? Yes, something happens there and from that point on, okay, we go all the way to the end of the second act, which is really basically what? End of the movie? Well, it's the end of our story going forward. By the end of the second act, we should know everything that we have to know except what? The final. The ending. How it's going to okay? happen how it's all going to come out. But the story really doesn't advance. It just unravels in the third act. Okay? So now, if you're an actor, you understand that what you're playing in the first act is not the same thing that you're playing in the second act because something has happened. Something has changed. If you are a protagonist or an antagonist, Okay? The antagonist generally is what you would call the lead. Alright? Now, in the third act, we find out how everything that we, everything that we developed in the second act. Now, the first act 
helps us understand what's happening in the second act. But it's the second act that brings all the prepositions to what's going to happen in the third act or how we're going to resolve it. Now, how does this affect an actor? Well, in movies, in film, if we had a sh shot in this room that was part of the plot in the first act, and we had that same room, an office, whatever, or a home, in the second act, the company is going to shoot both those scenes at the same time which means that you have to understand in the change of the two scenes, you have to understand, okay, what's happening in the first act and what's happening in the second act and what the change was or what emotionally or visually has happened to you since the first act. And you as the writer, you as the director, you as also the actor, has to now come along and has to say, okay, when I do this second scene, and sometimes they'll shoot the ending of the film may happen in the same location that was in the first act. So now you have to understand where you have gone as an actor also, if you're a support actor, what you're contributing to that moment. I just want you all to understand, we are not after, we, we're not after actors, directors, okay, and writers. We're after filmmakers. And as a filmmaker, you, your contribution, whether you're acting in it, directing in it, producing it, whatever you're doing, you have to be aware of these elements. And you have to be aware of the theme. What is the theme, Jonesy? What is the theme? Of the place I'm doing tonight? No. What does the theme mean? What does it exist of? It's really kind of the more, not the moral of your story, but really what the essence of your story. Well, it's what, it. it's what people will get out of your story, whether they're aware of it. Sometimes the audience is never aware of it. If you watch Rocky, okay, you're glad of how it came out, but yet he didn't win the fight. So the theme of Rocky is that winning isn't everything. Right? Coming in second is not so terrible it depends on your life and who you are. What's another theme, Nick? Sometimes in life, in order to be loyal, you have to betray. Sometimes in life, in order to be loyal, you have to betray. Okay. All right. So, I want you all to know this formula and know it intrinsically. I don't care what part of any filmmaking you're going to participate in, you have to know all of this. And if you're working with someone, we say the writer creates it, the director interprets it, and the actor makes it happen. That's the most important element. Have we got that? And I'm going to keep going over this and over this until this is second nature. You should never even think about putting anything on paper until you know you need all these elements. Most important, the one thing that throws everybody is you have to know the ending before you start. You have to know where you're going. You have to know if you say, well, this guy's walking down the street and a car hits him, and his wife is now telling him to wear a cast to stay in bed for, for six months so they can get some money. Okay? We have to know how that story is going to end. Just from the start. 
Got it? That's why people get hung up. That's why people say, oh, I got a great idea for a movie. You see, this guy goes in and what happens, the government does this and does that, and, but I'm stuck here. He's stuck because he doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't know where his ending is. And he will never go anywhere unless he knows what it is he's trying to project, what it is that all these elements connect to. And this theme is never the plot. It's not the plot of your story. It's what people are going to get out of it. If I watch Rocky, which is the simplest form of screenplay, if I watch Rocky, okay, I get the feeling that I'm glad this guy didn't win, but got what he wanted. He came in second. Because we live in a society that says winning is everything. Well, it wasn't here. Okay? So, when you're going to sit down, if you're going to write a one minute commercial, or you're going to write a 10 minute short film, or you're going to write a full screenplay, these things have to be there. These elements have to be there. And if you get lost, or sometimes you're not sure. That's when you have to be inventive about what your exposition has to show. Sometimes you'll go through a whole story, get to the end and say, you know what, I need a scene here. I need something here. What's, what's here in Rocky that's incredible? We find out one invent important thing from, a, from an actor that only has three lines in the whole film. Hey, Rocky, you're a bum. We hear it here. And what does he say at the end of the second act? He says, all I want to do is be standing. I can't win. But all I want to do is be standing at the end of the fight so people don't think I'm a bum. And here it started, right from here. Now, the audience doesn't go by that. You, an audience can't go back. Remember, once you go through in a film, you can't expect the audience to go back unless what? You have a flashback? Huh? Unless you have a flashback in the scene? A few use a flashback. A flashback to most writers is a weakness. Unless you know how to really use a flashback, uh, it's extremely difficult to work. In the beginning, I would try to stay away from flashbacks. The master of the flashback was Sergio Leone. Okay, in Fistful of Dollars, Few Dollars More, uh, all of his films he used in, in one of his great films, which was um, uh, once Upon a Time in America, okay, he used three hours, he used the flashback as a very powerful tool. But I wouldn't attempt that yet. In the beginning, keep your stories simple. Keep everything simple. Keep your theme simple. And once that's drilled into you, it's going to be very hard for people to criticize your screenplay. They may not like, you'd be surprised how your screenplays will become less critiqued. That somebody may not like the subject, somebody may not like the theme, but that doesn't mean they're not going to like, like your, your screenplay. How many people write a screenplay, submit it to a producer, and the producer never takes the screenplay but hires the writer to work on a project? It happens all the time. Why? Because when he reads it, he understands that if he gives you his idea, you will know how to develop that idea. Because he sees that you have the ability to do it. Do we follow? You all look amazed. Okay, don't be amazed. I all follow. Right. So, what's that? I follow. Oh, you follow. Okay. 